Well, hey everybody. I am making a new video. I've been making little rants for Facebook. Um, but I figured I've been getting a little encouragement to um, do me a channel. And I do have all the socials, you know. I got the X, formerly known as Twitter. I got the Gram. I think there's a Tumblr account <laughs> someplace. And um, what else? What's that other thing? Oh, yeah, the TikToks. I'm on that, too. And, of course, the YouTubes. Um, but I haven't really been doing anything. But um, currently, you know, if anybody been seeing me on the Facebook, I've been having... A little ongoing series due to being displaced. Yep, I'm in a motel room. I've been here. This is going on week. This will be a month. But supposedly we're going home on uh, Wednesday. Um, talk about how I feel about that too. But anyway. Um, it hasn't been an easy time for me. This This displacement. It's been very difficult. It's been very difficult. Um, the, you know, from the way that they, they did the whole thing and just, I mean, the circumstances behind it. You know, I done had two roommates from hell. <laughs> and it's been a lot. It's been a lot on me, you know. Um, normally, I try to be bubbly and happy and positive but um this part of my journey oh boy <laughs> hey i've been angry i've been hurt you know i feel lost you know i feel very disrespected and disregarded um and it's been a very hard time you know i feel like I'm drowning and people just okay <laughs> you know and uh, you know you get tired you know you get tired of um, of trying sometimes you know you get you get worn out you know emotionally this this journey of mine right now for the past five years it's been a trip you know it started five years ago when you know the man I was with turned out to be a demon and that broke my heart and I started on the run from there you know, and then all the way up and then three years ago, I was living motel weekly life, you know. Um, and that by itself is, is very destabilizing in a certain respect. A lot of people are doing it. This is another form of housing in America. And I don't think people understand that it's real out here. So to be displaced and put back into that whole environment has been triggering to say the least, you know, and, um, you know, so supposedly, um, this furnace will be finished and supposedly we'll be back there on the 28th, which is Wednesday, I think. Um, I don't really trust these people. I don't trust them. I feel that they're corrupt because how was it able to get to this level in the first place? Okay, let's ask these questions, okay? Let's just be for real. You know, I hate, you know, I tonight I was thinking to myself, I said, you know what? I understand why they say ignorance is bliss. You know, it took me 55 years. I'll be 55 in six months. It took me 55 years to really kind of understand why they say ignorance is bliss. You know, and... Um, and why I say that and why I've come to that realization is a lot of my issues is because I know better. I know this ain't how the shit's supposed to go. I know better. I got 30 years in the field. I know better. You know, and to be at 
ignorant, arrogant, greedy, and corrupt people's mercy, it wears you out. It wears you out. Okay, so the biggest, one of your biggest commercial properties, there's no maintenance checklist. You mean to tell me? Y'all made $111 million in 2019. And I could get 2023's figures. I just ain't got back on that website. Because, see, it's all public information. See? So you mean out of $111 million, nobody knew five years ago that that motherfucking furnace, boiler, whatever the fuck it is, was needing replacement? There's no budget. And the maintenance and repairs of your properties. Especially one of your biggest ones. Okay. There's no, no budget for that. But you got budgets to buy motels. <laughs> yeah. How many of your managers got, bu got bonuses? Hmm. Hmm. But the minimums. Y'all couldn't seem to figure out. But then again, nobody's ever there. See, I don't think nobody on that little team there in Fitchburg puts in 40 hours a week. Maybe maintenance. <laughs> maybe. I get them at least maybe 15 hours. Maybe. Mm -hmm. But there's whole weeks where we ain't seeing nobody. And you know what they rely on? They rely on gossip. Yeah. The people they look to, they be the main suspects. House manager selling her suboxins, <laughs> buying people's but the buying trade, the food stamp, all kind of shit go on there. Uh, who know? Okay, well, hmm. none of the main suspects be all up in shit, but she untouchable. Okay, <laughs> but as far as workers actually there attending the shit, hmm. <laughs> So when you when they want to come to us talking about oh we didn't have no idea bitch <laughs> there was a heat emergency last winter too <laughs> bitch and as for me my radiator never worked going on three years I got the space heater that you can't turn up past low because why you'll trip the fuse that's another safety concern the, the way the fuses be tripping in that little building hey. And then all the case manager got to say to you is, uh, uh, get you some rental insurance. Yeah, okay, bitch. That's, that's worth my life. <laughs> it's my life. Literally. Because this motherfucking place is not being looked after properly. Gargoyle fell off the motherfucking building. Okay, what does that say? Structurally. When a gargoyle falls off the motherfucking building. <laughs> Hello. Uh, uh, uh. And I'm so frustrated because I'm stuck there. Income wise. See. See that's not how this was supposed to go. I had nine months. I was going to get into Because they have apartments. They do. They have contracts with one of the biggest property management companies in New England. Wind management. Out of Boston. But see, some of us are stupid. We're not supposed to put one and two together. But, okay, you got one of the biggest people. So you, you, you can't tell me that appropriate housing is not available for me. It just means somebody got to actually be somewhere and do something. That they're getting a good salary to do. Okay? Because salary is public information, too. Okay? Ho, 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 ho. Yeah, five grand fucking month. Some people getting. Yeah, some people getting three grand a month. To do what? And you people out here still suffering. You people ain't got the right medicine. Ain't got the right behavioral health. Ain't got the right interventions. It, you know, you want to look at the people you so worried about being embarrassed. <laughs> but you got a vulnerable young lady being sex trafficked and shit. But you worried about being embarrassed. Yeah. So, of course, me and my little handicaps don't matter. 
No, no, I'm problematic. Yeah, I'm problematic. I don't know what I know. I don't know what, you know, working in the field since 1990 taught me. I don't know nothing about that. I don't know nothing about nothing. Okay. So, you know, I'm not feeling this return home. I'm not feeling smock. I'm not feeling none of this. This really, you know, it did a number on my mental. It really did because, you know, supposedly in the Constitution, we have uh, the rights to life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness. Now, if you're in a position where it's your field, it's your job, okay? And according to the 990, this is what y'all told that y'all do. You told the government, this is your field. This is what you provide. You said you provide this service, these services, these services to these people. Okay, so I qualify. But, and I was told I was going to receive this help. Okay, so I did everything the people told me to do. Only now to be told I don't qualify. No, I don't qualify no more. Why? Oh, I'm not homeless anymore. Oh, for real? I'm not on subsidy anymore. But when I was on subsidy, that's when I got disabled. It was the same time. Okay. Case workers. Supervisor. And nothing got put in place, no interventions, no nothing. Then. Why? Again, back to measurable outcomes. Back to measurable outcomes. Okay, but see, I don't know. I don't know shit. So that, see, this is why I figured out that ignorance is bliss. See, because so many of my little neighbors, they don't understand. They used to being treated like shit. They're used to not having people keep their word. They're used to inconsistency. Okay, half of them was sleeping under the bridge. Okay? <laughs> so, they out of the rain. They don't understand that there's more to shit. Okay? They happy they got a big cookie once in a while. And they can get away with doing their foolery, like selling their prescriptions and prostituting themselves and, and setting people up with illicit things. Let's tell the truth, shame the devil, shall we? Put it all the fuck out there. You want to put it out there? We put it all the fuck out there. Go and tell it, tell it all. <laughs> hey. But you know the funny part about all this is I've always been like that. I've always been, a, I guess you call it the truth teller, the truth seeker. You know, famous last words. I'm the baby of the family. I'd be like, ooh, I'm telling. <laughs> For real. For real. For real. But it's been a difficult journey. It's been very hurtful. Because I think about all the times that I myself um, had to um, stand in the gap professionally, advocate, you know, you know, speak truth to the powers that be, you know. I think about those times, you know. You know, what's the next right thing to do? Uh huh. What's the next right thing to do? Uh huh. Yeah, but you get tired. You get really tired. But, um, I think I'm coming back. I think I'm coming back. Yeah. This was a hard one. This was a hard one. This 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 piece of my journey, hey my friends. You know it's not been easy at all. Just wanna give up. 
looking for reasons not to give up. You know? Sometimes that's a simple thing. Sometimes it's not. You know? Trying to keep yourself someplace. You know? It hurts. Literally, physically. Chronic pain. I would not wish that on anyone. You know, it's something, you know, being in the healthcare uh, field, you know, I was surrounded by people that had various forms of chronic pain. It wasn't until I've gone through this situation here with my hips that I really understand. It's a different level. Being in a physical type of torment, okay? It's like your body, you feel like your body is betraying you, okay? And now for someone like me, you know, I worked physical jobs, you know. And um, in my own way, I was a very physical person. I loved dancing, you know. Um, you know, I felt very at home, very strong in myself and my body very capable and then to go through this condition of deterioration and just oh my god and then to be in an environment that is not adaptable to that you know there's no ramps there's no stairs I mean no I have to take 48 stairs <laughs> to get in and to get out to go check my mail to take out the trash to even if I thought about doing laundry down those basement stairs but those basement stairs scare the fuck out of me I ain't gone then. no no <laughs> no no they're like this okay handrail where what the hell oh hell no I don't fuck with the laundry downstairs cause those stairs here again it's not accessible Okay, so then that means I have to go to the laundromat. So that's added expense and added effort. Okay, <laughs> so here we go. But I don't deserve services. That's what I was told. Mm -hmm. I don't deserve. No. So, okay. <laughs> When it's in your power. And it is part of your services. That y'all told the government y'all do. Let's go back to that 990. The statement to the IRS. This is what y'all's funding. Y'all's non-profit. Is for. Hello. Hello. See that's why ignorance is bliss. That's why ignorance is bliss. Because if I didn't have no kind of knowledge of that shit. I'd be sitting up here, I don't even know. I don't even think that's possible. I just, because I'm my mother's child, okay? I'm, I was, I've been talking to my mom, watch. When I went back to that damn place to get my medicine, but my mama, this is my favorite picture. This is one of the only real pictures I have. I don't even know how I got my hands on this one. My sister had all the pictures. I think I might have stolen this one. But this was at my brother Bill's wedding. And this is my mom and my brother Kirk. And um, this is actually from my altar at home. So I've been talking to these two. Okay? Because I was talking about coming to join them. I really was. And I'm at that age they was at. Kirk was 56. Um, my mom was 56. She didn't make it. She had one birthday after her diagnosis. So I've been thinking she was 55, but she was really 56. She died in January. And her birthday was in July. So anyway, so I'm at that age, turning 55. And I've been so happy about it. Before all this bullshit came along, you know, I felt like I was at a place of reconciliation you know I got over the fact that I'm not working like I used to um, that was a big hit for my self-esteem for my everything it was a big hit okay but um, you know I said okay I'll do my art and you know I was just 
getting reconciled to that concept. And then all of this came along and it's very destabilizing and it's triggering and it's like I said, I'm gonna have my little feelings hurt. I got thrown under the bus, <laughs> disrespected. Hey, hey, no good deed goes unpunished. For real, for real. But a surprising thing also happened. Um, there's been a few people that reached out that I didn't think paid attention to me. So that was a nice thing. And, I, and it showed me also that I do have a, a sphere of influence. Yeah, I do. Mm -hmm. And, you know, no matter what these people are trying to say, okay, because they are smearing my name. They act like I'm like some psychotic bitch. No, I'm not psychotic. <laughs> okay, y'all ain't seen a psychotic bitch. Trust and believe. I can show you that. <laughs> Y'all ain't seen that shit, trust. Oh, what? Hey. <laughs> Come on. Come on. <laughs> but, um, it's really, it drove me to the edge. This shit has driven me to the edge, you know. Um, in a lot of respects. A lot of respects. So, yeah, but I'm coming back. It's slow. I'm like I said. I'm I'm not trusting these people. I'm not believing in these people. But I'm gonna believe in myself. You know, I am. I'm coming up with a couple of little ideas of what I can do um, to propel myself out of this bullshit. And I'm kind of um, I'm kind of coming around to be grateful. For the heartbreak I experienced this time. And when I say heartbreak. Um, you know. When they when they first put us here. I had this little roommate. I've had two roommates. Now I just got me and my children. And they're funny. They are so funny. Every time. they they They're funny. My babies. I love them. <laughs> I love these little kitties. They are too funny. They're really good for me. They really are. They know me so well. Hey, these two. But anyway, you know, girlfriend, you know, her ass, fucking Natalie. You know, I, I spent three years looking out for that girl. I took that girl under my wing so many times. I fought for that girl. They was trying to put her out. They was trying to evict her because her rep payee wasn't paying her rent. That's not her fault. And I sure enough was making reports on that girl's behalf. Yeah, I did that for a couple of my neighbors. I looked out for the little people that's vulnerable. Because it was the right thing to do. You know, it was the right thing to do. And so this little girl, she was here with me. And then come find out when she decided to bounce, she threw me under the bus saying I drove her out of here. When she didn't say nothing like that to me. We were sitting here eating ice cream sandwiches. And she was watching her Spongebob. You know? So, you know, that hurt my feelings. I'm like, girl, for three years? Because I tell you, you can't fry shit and smoke in the room. That was a problem. But I, I'm looking out for your ass. But that's a problem. Okay. So my boundary of following the rule is a problem for you. But I looked out for you. For three fucking years. That hurt my feelings. And I know, you know, look, look, look. I understand. The girl mentally challenged, you know. People, when they got their back against the wall, who knows what kind of shit they got. Look, hey, they denied Jesus. Okay, betrayal doesn't come from a stranger. Never. Or else it wouldn't be betrayal. Right? So, I get it. But it still hurt my feelings. <laughs> still 
hurt my feelings. Then the next specimen came along. And you know I thought this was a reasonable person. Come to find out that's another crackhead addict. Yeah, that's another straight up alley cat addict chick. Yeah, she ain't nowhere near ready. <laughs> nowhere near. Hey, girlfriend gonna be, if she survive, because the shit they got out here nowadays, I don't even know. I ain't speaking nothing over nobody. But listen, that's an alley cat. <laughs> that's a motherfucking alley cat. Hey, and if you know, you know. That's a motherfucking alley cat. Mange and all. That's a fucking alley cat. And uh, that hurt my feelings. <laughs> but actually, that does remind me of when I was a little girl trying to fucking take care of alley cats. Because guess what? See, my mama's probably laughing at my ass right about now. Because I just did the alley cat move. I just put that together just now. Okay, so technically I'm allergic to cats. Yes, I am allergic. <laughs> but I take me some medicine to live with my children. Yeah. So, um, when my mom found out I was allergic, we had a cat. We had to get rid of Smudgy. Smudgy went someplace. and But that didn't stop me from playing with cats. No, no. I always loved cats. I don't know why. I don't know if because being a little girl, they're like real moving stuffed animal. I don't know what it was about them, but I've always, what? Let me see a little cat someplace. But when I was a little girl, my ass, my eyes would get all swollen up and runny. And, <sighs> and my mom, you've been playing with a cat. <laughs> this mommy. <sighs> always had to play with a cat so occasionally being outside I'd see an alley cat and oh I'm playing with my dollies making little pies or whatever the fuck and oh here come the little cat oh I'm gonna share my potato chip with him oh okay little cat he eating the alley cat you know he might let me pet him okay it wouldn't take me long I, did, I think I pulled this maybe twice well, I kidnapped an alley cat. <laughs> I don't know. I put him in my book bag. I don't know how I got him in the house. But I got his ass in the house. Got him in my room. Okay, because I had my own little room. And, you know, alley cat might be happy for a little while. It's warm. It's dry. Okay, I'm feeding bologna and milk. And I don't even know half the shit I'd be trying to give these alley cats. And cat eat it. But he's used to the trash. See? See, I'm going somewhere with this. This thing is used to the trash. So, yeah, he's enjoying the bologna and the milk. But this motherfucker got fleas. He got worms. And he is not used to eating shit that is not rotten. So, eventually, the motherfucker is going to start throwing up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He got fleas on him. Then jumped off. Then got into my room. Now, here come my mom. And now, okay, and then my eyes is like this. The thing, I don't want to snuggle. The thing done scratched me up. So here I am. Imagine, little girl. <sighs> with a mangy cat. With the fleas jumping. The cat throw up. Mangy, okay. Where did you get that cat? Put that cat down. <laughs> All right. Here I'm going. I'm bringing it home. I'm bringing it home. Come on, follow me, follow me. What was I, seven, eight, some shit? Trying to love on the alley cat. Didn't understand why Mr. Alley Cat couldn't just sit with me and behave himself. He want to go home. He tired of me now. Now I'm trying to brush him and shit. Look, 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 lady. Little girl, I need to go back to my trash can. Okay, you getting on my nerves. Okay, your mama's yelling. I got to go. <laughs> That's the alley cat, right? I'm bringing it home. 2024, Daisy. Still trying to love on the alley cats. Except they got two legs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Come on in, alley.
alley cat roommate? You used to eating out the fucking trash and being kicked in the head? Yeah, come on, we're safe and clean and quiet. Oh, you want to bring your alley cat pal? <laughs> your alley cat pal was tweaking the fuck out. And now, see, that's the equivalent of the fleas and the vomits. Aha! And then scratch me up. Mm-hmm. Them pissed on the rug on your way out. Yeah, okay. Still, will I ever learn? <laughs> well, that was, um, that was something. That was something, my friends. I just put that together. Well, okay, so I guess the, the, the gist of it for right now is don't be trying to rescue the alley cats. Put that damn cat down. That's what Miss Erian would have been told me about the situation. Put that cat down.